Welcome back, peeps. We just recently ramped up the tombs of a musket grind, obtaining all seven purples and finishing the BIS armor sets for all three styles. So, what is next on Mr. Iron Bar? While filling the boss lock slot is in the background, we have some new bosses coming out where some new best in slots will be coming. With them, one of them has arrived called Phantom Muspa, unlocked after doing the new quest. And here it is. The Secrets of the North quest, a master level quest that is the prequel to Desert Treasure 2 out now. The requirements look fairly hefty, but since I'm maxed, I'm automatically good to go. Also, one cool thing to note is that this quest is very much inspired from the quest in the original game called the Temple Seniston and the other quest that happens after that because both involve the god Zaros and both involve infiltrating the Gorok Fortress. It all makes sense as Desert Treasure 2 will release the Zaros prayer book, which is also in line with the original Rootscape's reward for Temple Seniston. Whoa, looks like Fair Ring's got a graphical update. What do you guys think? Holy shit, was this shortcut of Wise always been there? Because I've been running around the whole time just to get to this spot. Oh my god. The quest boss is the weaker version of the actual Phantom Muspa boss, giving you a taste of what the real encounter is like. Simply ranging and cutting this boss with your best ranged weapon and bringing lots of food, I found out, is good enough to kill this boss, so even inexperienced PVMers will do fine. The most interesting new mechanic from this guy is the prayer barrier that Muspa has that massively reduces incoming damage, and removing this barrier by smiting it is the best way to deal with it. So people already figured out that Sapphire Bolts are the best against its prayer shield as the Sapphire Bolt special effect drains prayer off the boss by large amounts and it seems to trigger really often at this place. So I'm now making a bunch of Dragon Sapphire Bolts before I go and grind this boss. Before we go and sweat out this new grind, I just want to say that we can grind hard without smelling and feeling like doo doo because today's sponsor Manscapes got us covered. Breaking news, Manscaped now sells beer products. Manscaped scientists have been cooking up sick new men's grooming products. Their latest product is the Beard Hedger Pro Kit to remove any facial hair management struggles. The star of the kit is the Beard Hedger itself. This sleek bad boy comes with a 20 hair cutting lengths and only one guard, so you can Picasso your beard into whatever art style you want. Its titanium coated T-blade will delete hair in one stroke without nicking your skin. The kit also comes with a beard shampoo and conditioner that is designed specifically for facial hair to maximize your beard's health. Next, there's the Manscaped's beard oil to keep your beard moisturized and looking good. Let's not forget about Manscaped's reliable performance package 4.0 as it's great for further grooming and comfort as the package contains products like the Lawnmower 4.0 for taming hair down under and other products like the Weed Whacker Trimmer for ear and nose hair and more. Make looking and feeling good easy today and get 20% off and free shipping with the code RICECUP20 at manscaped.com. Link in the description. Let's talk about what this boss drops. Muspa drops the pet, the charge ice to unlock the pet transmog, the ancient icon to upgrade the ancient staff, the venator shards to make the new venator bow that shoots three times and hits up to three enemies, the frozen cache that gives extra drop rolls, and finally the ancient essence used to charge and make the bow and also to upgrade the imbue heart. I thought the bow and the imbue heart upgrade would be a singular drop as usual, but it looks like Jagex is going for a new style of uniques. What do you guys think about that? So the imbue heart grind is effectively a non RNG grind as you need 150k essence to use it on the original imbue heart to make it. And the essence is commonly dropped by the boss in large amounts. We're going to need on average about 200 kills to get enough essence to upgrade the heart. Not too bad at all because I will most likely be killing more than 200 on the way to the bow. The bow is also a really good weapon to grind out but you need 5 pieces of venator shards to make it so that seems like it'll take a lot longer to get, 500 kills on average. So let's try to get enough shards to upgrade the imbue heart first. Sweet. Ooh, ancient essence, free collection lot slots, damn 600, wow. Yay, okay, that's pretty good. Wow, well, still a slow fight though, I guess. Fairly slow boss, but uh... Oh, I got charged ice, what the hell? <laughs> oh, it's a 100% chance for sub 3 minute KC. Oh, that's that doesn't even count then, never mind. This isn't even like a rare occurrence, you know? This is literally if you just 
do it another three minutes well nice okay this is a good kill all right i didn't play like dookie this one whoa dude crazy dragon plate legs three of them oh okay i mean so far you know i'm a little biased because obviously i have crazy gear though you know keep in mind it's probably possible to kill it with ibans but it'll probably take like 10 minutes oh ancient icon holy shit that's an actual new item yo uh is that the ancient staff upgrade let's go cool so we got the ancient icon which means it's time to upgrade the ancient staff to the ancient scepter its overall stats are better than the staff and using ancient spells will have their effects become 10 percent more effective with the scepter so if you use ice barrage with it the freeze will last almost two seconds longer kind of cool the staff also comes with a 5% extra magic damage, so it's basically a cheaper version of a Kodai Wan or Nightmare Staff. Great mid-level weapon for auto-casting ancients. Also, there will be upgrades of various kinds for the Scepter when DT2 comes out, as those bosses will drop some add-ons for it. I wonder what they'll be. What do you guys think? At its current state, it's not too useful for me, because of course Kodai is basically better, but it might become better. In certain situations with the new add-ons when dt2 comes out at least you can redemption pretty easily oh no okay oh <laughs> damn it i i talked too much but yeah the redemption strat helps oh i got something Ooh. ah oh, nothing crazy just just a random cash thing but collection log slot whoa 12 ranars though okay I've already been spoiled because of TOA though, but this is cool. I'll take it. Nice. Uh, holy shit. Oh my god. This this place is uh, real, pretty good for giant bolts. Oh, ancient icon again. <laughs> so let's talk about how this boss works now that I've gone pretty comfy with the Muspa boss. So Muspa has two normal forms and an enraged phase form at the very end. The first two forms will alternate every 100 damage that you do to it. One of the forms is a range and magic hybrid form that's weak to range. And the other form is a melee form that will chase you with melee and weak to magic. There are also spikes that will chase you from time to time. It also has a one-time teleport mechanic where you have to dodge the clouds while it's jumping off the place. So you just range it until it goes to the mage phase. Although you can mage the melee phase if you want quicker kills. Just dodge the spikes, kite the melee phase, can't pray range unless it charges and shoots its magic attack. As the magic attack is a reaction based attack where you can block it upon seeing it, but the range one you cannot, so that's why you can't pray range. Once it gets to the enraged phase, you simply hide behind a spike to avoid the big explosion and put on your sapphire bolts and hit the boss till the prayer shield is down and use your best range weapon against it. Using greater corruption from today's spellbook is great for breaking the prayer shield faster and if you want to be extra sweaty you can combine all of that with flicking smite in between your attacks to drain its prayer further and that's pretty much every fight in basic terms oh wait when did i get a 142 i didn't even realize i, I had a 140 if you're enjoying the video up to now consider subscribing and liking the video as i got more videos of more exciting content coming out I hope to show you guys the Venator Bow when I get it, and also new Wildy Bosses for Wildy Boss Weapon Upgrades. Look out for that. Oh my god! Bro, I got the pet! <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're, we're gonna green log this boss. Holy shit. Wait, it's auto-insured, right? Yo, that's sick. It's my first pet in about a year. Because it was next. Yeah, next been it's like a year old now so yeah that's when i got it so that was like a year ago holy that's so cool definitely graphically one of the most interesting because uh, if you don't notice this it's got a transparency to it like look at that you know if you were bite size i reckon you'd be quite nutritious oh that's like implying people eating like you know fried bugs and stuff you know do not eat me human congratulations you've unlocked the new metamorphosis sick it's got the melee form. Oh, this one's pretty cool. I like this one, yeah. I think the shielded probably looks the coolest of them all. Oh, that was so dangerous. I just freaking made that. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, I got 6-hour log. Shit! 
I didn't die. Okay, well, I did like a stupidly long trip. I think I picked up most of the valuable drops. I mean, I stayed enough to get 16,000 essence. So, in one trip. Damn, two mil. Okay, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Okay, let me see how many uh, shards I have. I mean, essence. Oh, I'm so close. 142k. Holy shit. 8k more and we get the ing b heart upgrade i can't wait to have some fun with that anyways it's time to leave because we have gone all the essence that we need for the b heart upgrade so it took me 215 kills to get 150k essence for the saturated b heart upgrade a little more than expected oh look at that it looks bigger it lives up to his name you use 150,000 ancient essence to saturate your b heart oh dude that animation was sick Nice, turn into a saturated heart. So the original in heart gave you 10 magic levels, but this saturated version is 13 magic levels. So three more than usual, which is an extra max hit over the regular and an extra two for the shadow. And the saturated in heart acts like a divine potion. So it's actually more overall magic damage than what I just said. All right, you guys might be wondering, what are the new max hits now with the Saturated Imbue Heart? So I can show you real quick. And before y'all question about the boots and the ring, there is no boots and ring that gives magic damage. So first things first, let's go with the Shadow now with the Saturated Imbue Heart. Off task, 64 on task. What do we get here? On task, 70. That's huge. I think it was like... A 68 or something like that before so that's quite nice okay let's go ahead and use the trident off task real quick 44 and on task 50 wow that's actually really good what about saying what we got here saying is only one higher on task but what about off task 46 so that's two more max hits over the trident that's actually quite quite nice so yeah, here's the new max hits on and off tasks for the three most popular auto cast magic weapons. So the Saturated and Bew Heart use case is insanely wide. Pretty much any time you use magic, especially if you have a Trident, a Sang, or a Shadow whose magic damage is affected by your magic level, it is huge. But just any magic scenario combat wise, you should just bring it. Just like the normal Bew Heart, except this one just does more of what it used to do more accuracy more damage and the best part is it's a divine so that means you don't have to use preserve you can say more prayer so yeah it's gonna be amazing it's gonna definitely help here muspa kill the boss faster let's prayer use so i still have to do muspa boss for the venerator bow or whatever you call it i still don't have a single piece in over freaking 200 kills it's one in a hundred nice it just hit my max 64 on the boss with the shadow we're gonna use brimstone boots instead of pegs. I don't lose any magic bonus because pegs be draining my magic quite a lot. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh! Jesus, man. That was some good dodging. As for drops of this boss, here's the loot so far from Muspa. Zero Venator shards, unfortunately. But we have a good sample of all the regular drops. As you can see, it drops a lot of good drops. Like Dragon Legs and Medhelms for GP. Good seeds like Snapdragon and Torstals, Dragon Bolts, lots of runes, and so much more. It's basically a combination of Warcath and Zora drops, and just overall better drops scaled up. It does make sense since I'd say this boss is overall harder than the other two, mainly because the gear requirements are higher to get similar kill times. The drops that are super good for me are definitely the Snapdragon and Toeflax herbs, because it saves me from having to farm them for Bruise and Restore, so that's really, really nice. So I figure showcasing the imbue heart at Corporal Beast is a pretty cool and interesting way to show you guys how to use the imbue heart outside of just your conventional magic situations. So normally you would just use the imbue heart pretty much anywhere you use magic because it will just make your magic either more accurate or actually get you more max hits such as with the saying the shadow and the trident. But there's also some other properties as well such as magic levels giving you magic defense. And this is where I will showcase that a corp because the divine B hearts gives me magic defense on top 
which is really good since I am tanking course magic attack with the suicide method. And the higher the magic, the better. Also, my thrall timer is a bit longer too, which is a nice plus because I use that, that corp as well. So the saturated imbue heart is a divine essentially. So that means the magic levels don't go down, whereas the regular one, the magic level did go down gradually. So that means my overall magic defense is even higher than what I just said. And one last thing about the imbue heart, so you can recast it every 5 minutes instead of the normal 7 minutes with the regular version. And that's amazing because my corp kills take around 6 minutes and a few seconds. So that means I can keep casting the imbue heart and maintain that magic level boost the whole time. Which is awesome because I couldn't do that before with the other imbue heart. We'll be working on some side progress as usual in this video. So we're going to cover some slayer related stuff. I got a Kraken task, so we can use the Imbue Heart there. Should be seeing some new max hits for Slayer related tasks too, as we've shown on the max hit test, and some clues to go along with it for the collection lock slots. Oh man, that's crazy. I'm, I'm basically out of Chaos Runes now. <laughs> I haven't had to buy Chaos Runes in such a long time, but using the Shadow makes me go through them so fast, so we gotta start buying them from now on. Oh, new max hit, 70 on the Kraken, nice. Wait, I didn't mean to summon that. Oh, I got it! Yo, I just complained that you're four times dry. Let's go. All right. Yes, with just five left. Okay, cool. Well, we don't need to do the normals anymore. I still need to get a Kraken Tentacle, though. From the boss. Because I could get it from normal, but the boss is way better rate. 1 in 400 from the boss versus like, what, 1 in 1,000 from these guys, so. I got some clues from usual AFKing and whatnot, so let's go ahead and open them for some clue slots. I mean, I opened like 3 clues earlier and I didn't get any, so. Come on, I know you can't do this. Boom! Just like that, boys. Dopamine, I'm happy. Into a badoodle, badoodle. Oh, and it's a mimic, okay! Yeah, we'll stick to melee, it's better. Okay, here we go. Oh, what? We got a bucket helm. Holy shit, let's go. And a master clue? Holy shit, I don't think I ever got a bucket helm before. Okay, I was thinking about the bucket helm G. That comes from master clue scrolls, so this is not the same one. Dang, the golden trim. Here we go, let's open up these caskets from uh, last night's Redwoods. Oh, musketeer, sick. I've never gotten this before, ever. Hell yeah, cool. Alright, uh, it looks like a blue apron, really. Next one. Oh, another unique item. Easy. So many of these rune god armor. Huh. Nice, that's two slots right there, boys. Getting closer to 700. Sheesh. Oh, of course, these other two are just junk. 